Hi, this is Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind, and I am answering readers' questions. And today I have a question from Holly. Holly says, hi, Annie, can you do a video about why when I was drinking a bottle of red wine a night for decades, I didn't even get the worst hangover symptoms anymore most of the time? I love the body chemistry aspects of how bad alcohol is for me, and I'm sure it would be very frightening to know why after years of years of drinking, my poor abused body didn't even react the same way. You've changed my life, but I still struggle with wanting a drink, not moderate drinking once in a while. Thank you so much. Um, so Holly, this is a great question. And this was true for me as well. Like when I was drinking a very regular amount of alcohol every single night, because it was just part of my routine, my hangovers went down a lot more. Like they were not as bad when I was drinking you know, say the routine changed up and we had a really big night out and instead of just drinking my normal, you know, bottle of plus of red wine, all of a sudden we were doing Mai Tais and all sorts of other stuff, then I'd wake up the next morning and feel really atrocious. And I also correlated it to lots of different things. Like as long as I, I could drink wine all night, but then if I had a cocktail after the wine, I'd feel really bad. But if I could drink wine all night and then finish off with a few beers, I wouldn't feel as bad. So there's all sorts of things. So a lot of interesting things about hangovers. First of all, um, hangovers, obviously, they're created when by a, a bunch of the different things. One of the ways that they're created is when your body just frankly doesn't get enough uh, water. And so you're dehydrated. And I just wanted to take a minute here and read you some of these other things that hangovers do inside your body. But I need to, to find the page here. Um, because it's really fascinating. But I think the important thing to know is what you said it hits it right on the nose. The fact that over time, your body literally can become accustomed to and tolerant to even hangovers. So the example that I like to give for this is my brother, he has a goat farm. And so he spent a lot of his time like in the goat farm, feeding the goats, doing all sorts of things with the goats. And for him, he doesn't even smell the goats anymore. It's just something he does not smell at all. But when I visit him, I smell it completely and entirely. So a lot of the theories that are out there is that once over time you have been drinking for long enough, you have become very tolerant to the symptoms of a hangover. So you're more you're used to them, you're more willing to tolerate them. You could be hung over and you don't even know it. The aches, the pains, the exhaustion, the low energy, they have just become status quo for you. And this general feeling of feeling unwell has just become part of daily life and part of the routine. And I know that this was absolutely true for me. Now there's another way to this and I really want to find I keep looking away from the screen because I had it up and it was something from the Mayo Clinic and I'm having a very hard time finding it now but the other thing that contributes to this is that um, there is some evidence to say and I think you hit the nail on the head that uh, not getting hangovers anymore is a sign of alcohol dependence so over time your body can actually become so dependent on alcohol that it is, again, creating enough of a tolerance, enough of a withdrawal that you're starting to feel those symptoms. So hangovers, you know, there's a bunch of different symptoms that they have, fatigue and weakness, excessive dry mouth, headaches, muscle aches, nausea, bottom emitting, poor sleep, increased sensitivity to light and sound, dizziness or the room spinning, shakiness, decreased ability to concentrate, rapid heartbeat, mood, mood disturbances, depression, anxiety, irritability, all of these things over time, your body just bakes them into sort of the status quo and says, okay, this, this is going to be present in my body. We obviously don't have a chance on it. So I'm going to do everything I can to minimize the effect on you human so that you can do the stuff you need to do and get through your life. So I think that, um, it, it's worth talking really briefly about the things that contribute to a hangover because it's worth understanding them. And then you can also maybe more understand why not. But the two things to take away is that, the reason that you don't get hangovers as frequently after being drink, drinking for a long time, there's a lot of evidence to say that that is actually a symptom of being in a very, very unhealthy relationship with alcohol. Your body should be hung over as it purges the toxin. And if it's not, it is because there's been so much of it over so much time that your body is focusing like on just making you feel better through it. Much like, you know, my brother has gotten really used to this all of goats. So here's some things that contribute to a hangover, and it's just worth understanding more. Alcohol causes your body to produce more urine. So that's, again, that's um, this is 
leads to dehydration. So this is when it's a diuretic, and this is thirst and dizziness and lightheadedness, okay? Alcohol also triggers an inflammatory response inside your immune system, and we don't talk about this much, but it's really interesting. So this can produce physical symptoms, such as inability to concentrate, memory problems, decreased appetite, loss of interest in certain activities. Alcohol irritates the lining of your stomach and the lining of your throat. And in your stomach, it increases the production of stomach acid and delays in your stomach emptying. It actually makes it the, that you don't digest as fast because your body focuses its resources on purging the alcohol out of your body. So your stomach doesn't empty as fast, which can inflame your stomach lining. And this can cause abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Alcohol causes your blood sugar to fall. So if your blood sugar dips too low, you experience fatigue, weakness, shakiness, upset, uneasiness, um, mood disturbances, and in extreme cases, you can even experience seizures. And this is really interesting because low blood sugar, I see this in my children all the time when they just haven't had a snack and all of a sudden they're just turn into these monsters and you're like, what's happening? And then you give them, you know, a, a snack and a, a, give them an apple and it's like, wow, the lights went back on. They went from being just monstrous, horrible crying and tears fighting with each other to nice, friendly, helpful again. And it's, you know, that blood sugar, it's such a real thing and alcohol really causes your blood sugar to fall. Um, alcohol causes your blood vessels to expand, which can lead to headaches. And alcohol makes you sleepy, but it prevents deeper stages of sleep. So you actually, it often makes you wake up in the middle of the night. Many of us know this feeling and it can leave you really groggy and tired because it actually prevents REM sleep. So, those are all the things that alcohol does, which cause you to feel hungover. Uh, you might have a more severe hangover if you drink on an empty stomach or if you're drinking with other things such as, you know, nicotine or other, other drugs. If you're not sleeping enough, which is very difficult after drinking anyway. But um, a lot of researchers believe that hangover symptoms can be in part due to poor quality sleep cycle, which alcohol induces. Again, it prevents us from entering REM sleep. And... I think that, again, the important things to know, hangovers are miserable, and it is not necessarily a good thing to stop getting hangovers. It just might really mean that you have progressed further along the spectrum that is tolerance and dependence on alcohol. And here's the thing about that. It only goes one way uh, with alcohol. If you're drinking every single day, you're becoming more tolerant to it every single day. You need more to get the same effects. And you often, if you look at people, it progresses in a way that people are drinking more next year, more in five years than they were. And if you look back in your life, you, I can certainly see that I was drinking a few nights a week. I'd have a glass of wine or two. And then all of a sudden it was more nights and more wine. And then all of a sudden it was every night and a lot of wine. And it even kept progressing over time to the point before I stopped drinking, I was drinking close to two bottles of wine a night, every single night. And again, wasn't even feeling it and was waking up functional the next day. And that was because my body had actually developed a tolerance on alcohol where it was ever present. So it had accommodated so much for the presence of alcohol that I like almost needed it at that point at some level. And it, And I was at the little area of physical dependence, but it gets much, much worse to the point where I knew a woman who she had drank so much for so long that at the end of her days, she alcohol killed her. But in the hospital, as she was dying from alcohol, she actually had to be given alcohol to keep her alive even for a little bit longer. So that is where this story ends. And that's why you absolutely want to get a handle on it as soon as you can and why it's such a great question, Holly. So thank you so much. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.